Hello, everybody. Happy Thursday. Welcome to Ask Sarina Live. I am your host, Janine Truitt, Chief Innovations Officer for Talent Think Innovations LLC. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. Let me turn this down. Hello. How are you? Hope everybody had a great week. Thank you for joining me. This is Ask Sarina Live. This is my weekly show that I do every Thursday at 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time where I discuss everything from the world of work to tonight relationships to social media to entrepreneurship, the whole kit and caboodle. Hey, Lataria. Um, so yeah, that's my show. And a little bit about me, if you're just joining me for the first time, again, I am Janine Truitt. I am the Chief Innovations Officer for Talent Think Innovations, LLC. It is a business management strategy firm. Hey, girl. Um, that I started back in 2013 to address issues in the workforce. So I look at talent management, how are companies attracting, developing, and uh, retaining their employees, but I also help with a full scope of other things, um, like people that are trying to brand themselves. Um, I do a bit of that, and I do that for businesses as well. I'm a techie girl, so I get into HR tech implementations and what companies should be doing with that. So that's just a little bit about me. Um, so let's get to it. Tonight's topic is all about how do you kind of set yourself up for the right person to be behind you when one, you're trying to progress your career and or two, you are building something like me, like growing a business or something to that extent. So yes, I do help companies with human resources. So I was in human resources for over 10 years. Um, so yeah, I don't do payroll, I don't do benefits, I am solely focused on talent management. So recruitment, performance management, employee relations, that kind of thing. So yes, I do help companies with human resources. Thanks for that question, Lataria. So relationships, like this is so not world of work. Um, but I think it's important to discuss and it's kind of lighthearted and thank you so much for the hearts um, because I think people kind of take for granted how important it is to be with the right person in order to achieve your goals. Um, I have been extremely fortunate, extremely fortunate to have the... Yes. Absolutely. Almost like outsourcing, not really quite outsourcing. I'm more of the person that they would call in if, for instance, no, that's okay. I'm glad you're asking. Um, I'm the person they would bring in if, for instance, say their recruitment team is not doing all that they can. Um, maybe requisitions aren't moving quickly. Maybe um, there there's some gaps between what the recruitment team does and what the internal partners need. I would come in and then help them with the strategy to get the team mobilized to do what they need to do to improve that. So I'm not a headhunter. I don't do the actual recruitment, but I provide the framework and the strategy for what a recruitment team would do. If a company um, had a poor performance management system that was no longer working, I would come in and look at what the deficits are and propose some new ways of looking at performance for them. So I'm really only focused with the items that are really contributing to the betterment of um, the employees. Could you help a tech startup with this? That one? Absolutely. Absolutely. I have spoken to um, a few companies 
about what they may need in terms of human resources, um, resources, right? <laughs> um, so yes, that is something that I can do and I understand the tech arena very well um, as I do with the federal area as well. Those are kind of where I've been, healthcare, tech, um, R&D, pharmaceuticals. Those are things that are very comfortable for me. I'm glad you asked because I feel like nobody ever cares about the HR lady. Um, but I've also kind of branched out and done some other things. So yeah, absolutely. If there's ever anything you have a question about Letaria, you need to link with me and certainly um, let me know. I'm happy to share what I know. Yay, awesome. So relationships. So again, like I said, I have been extremely fortunate um, in finding, oh, very cool. Yeah, that's something you should definitely look into. Ah, I wanna hear about that. Link with me on LinkedIn, please, Lataria, if you're on LinkedIn. Or send me an email, talentthink, I-N-N-O-V at gmail.com. I'd love to hear more about that. So yeah, so a little bit about, I'm gonna give you the, the background of where I wanna go with this topic and why it's so important. So that's right, girl, find me. Um, I have been with my husband for 15 years this year. We've been married Oh my God, I'm losing track. <laughs> We've been married eight years as of this year. And so I know him long, long time. Like actually he was the guy in junior high school that used to like bug me. Like he used to hit me and run that kind of thing. And I used to act like I hated it, but I really liked it because I thought he was kind of cute. So lo and behold, anyway, High school happens, we remain friends, and it wasn't until he left high school that we like became an item. And so like I've been with him literally since like my last year in high school. It's kind of crazy. And I'm still excited about this relationship. Let's talk about it. So in any event, I just remember back then, and, and this is going back like over a decade, I just remember back then knowing what I wanted to do then, right? And at that time it was like, I was focused on going to college and at that time I was a biochem major. And so, you know, that was what I was gonna do. I was gonna become a biochem major. At that time I wanted to be a forensic pathologist. What a, a departure from HR, although I'm sure there's some irony in there somewhere, but that was my focus at the time. And so, I kind of like just knew what I wanted to do. I knew I was gonna go into the sciences and I had this whole grandiose plan for my life. And I remember like him and I dating and not, he really wasn't as sure about what he wanted to do. Um, and so it, you know, was one of those things where I was like, hmm, you don't really know what you wanna do? Like, uh, I don't know. Like you're cute, but like, Here's the thing. And so I remember back then saying to him these exact words, which is that I'm going to college. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to become this forensic pathologist. And, you know, at this time, I'm also working and going to school. And I was like, basically, I don't care what you do, like in life, as long as you do something. So I'm like, you have to tell me something. Like, you have to tell me what it is you want to be or what you think you could do that would make you happy and let's work towards that but i was like basically you can't be on my couch like we're not gonna have this situation where like down the line i'm on you know i'm in my own apartment and you're like sitting on my couch with like a bowl of cereal you know playing video games all day and not doing anything like this we can't have and he totally wasn't that kind of guy but I felt like very early on in the relationship, I needed to help him understand like what I was after 
and what my ambitions were and how he played into that. And part of how he played into it at that time was one, to understand what I was going after. And two, I needed him to understand that I needed him to do something equally as productive. Didn't have to be a rocket science, didn't have to be a doctor. I just needed him to do something he liked and he was good at and do that. And so it kind of brings me to my first point with relationships in the sense that like, if you know you're after certain things in life, don't kid yourself. Like don't kid yourself and put yourself in a relationship with somebody who is after absolutely nothing. Um, I have no problem with you helping that person figure it out because I feel like with my husband, I definitely helped him figure out some things about what he wanted to do. Um, but ultimately you have to be aligned. It doesn't have to be like apple to apple, but it should be like fruit to fruit in terms of goals. Um, and it should be communicated as early as possible. So like, I can't even remember like how early in the relationship it is, but it was like probably like year one, right? Because I was graduating, like we started dating in 2000 and I was graduating like the next year, literally in 2001. And so by that time, he had a pretty good understanding of where it was I was going. So I say this to say that it's important to communicate. Like you need to communicate as early and as often as possible. And so that was then, obviously I never became a biochem, <laughs> a biochemist um, or forensic pathologist that ended up changing vastly. Um, and he rolled with those punches and he ended up going into law enforcement and I rolled with those punches. And, you know, so here we are today and you know, I changed my focus kind of midway through school um, to industrial psychology and industrial psychology is what kind of led me down the road to HR because industrial psychology studies the, uh, the, the idea of work, how people behave in the workplace. So this is how I got here. And so I got really, really, once I switched from the sciences, I kind of got really, really excited about this HR thing and I just went gung ho with it. And I remember my first few jobs, I was, I mean, great, but like bad companies. And I've shared some of this with you guys before. And it was just kind of like, you know what? Somewhere along the line, I'm going to like have my own company because I can do this way better, way, way better. And so I kind of knew that I was going to go into business for myself. I didn't know it was going to happen this quick but I knew I was gonna do that. And I started again, communicating with him. Like, these are the things I'm thinking. And one of the things I just find, and I'm no like, you know, um, you know, ask Abby or whomever talks about relationships, but I am that friend. Like, I'm sure everybody knows that person that like everybody comes to me about relationships, right? everybody like Janine what should I do Janine this guy or whatever and so you know I just know that a lot of times the issues that go on in relationships have to do with lack of communication um maybe overshooting expectations because of course from where you sit you just want what you want especially when you're young like I was really really young when I got with my husband so at that time, there was no leveling of my expectations in terms of what he needed to be, right? I just wanted what the hell I wanted. And that's what it was. And obviously, over time, you know, life molds you into being more, I guess, in a place of compromise or being um, more open to what a human being is, what it means to be with another human being and share life, right? Um, but at that time, I just wanted what I wanted. Um, but I think the only thing literally that saved me was the fact that I understood that it was absolutely necessary to communicate very early. Like all of the relationships I know right now, and that's inclusive of my parents who are divorced, by the way, and I have no problem sharing this, has to do with 
a lack of communication where one person understood the union was going to be one way and the other person understood the union was going to be this way and somewhere in the middle the wires got crossed and and nothing was accomplished um and so you know when that happened the thing is is this is so crucial like it's not even about like just building a business like if you are ambitious in the sense that you want to like progress in your career you've got to have somebody behind you that one believes in you two can deal with your star like if you end up being like an oprah in the world as a woman like if i were to become that woman i needed a guy that understood what that meant and that could stand by me confidently and not feel away or not feel insecure in his skin. And so like even now, I'm constantly checking in with him because my business is growing and I am doing a lot of different things and the goal is for my business to be a big deal. Don't know if I'll reach the ranks of an Oprah, but hey, if it happens, I'm happy for it. And so I do ask him like, how are you feeling? You know, what do you think about this? What do you think about me going in this direction or that direction? And thankfully, we can always have a very amicable conversation about what that is. Um, but if he was not, I could not have anything that I have right now if he was not on board with this. There's just there's no way that I could. And I've seen so many of my friends who have great ideas, great ambitions, great goals, have that kind of squashed all because, I don't wanna say they picked the wrong partner, but all because maybe either they didn't communicate early on that that's truthfully what they wanted and or they're truthfully with somebody that is unable to support them as they progress in life. They're not scalable. Like in tech, we talk about things being scalable or in, even in business, you talk about businesses being scalable. Like your partner, partner, boyfriend, whomever you're trying to be with for the long haul, they've gotta be scalable. That is to say that like who I was um, 10, 15 years ago is not the Janine that sits before you today. I am, you know, I was a little girl that extremely adaptable, right? So the reality of my life, aside from being a wife and a mother, is that I run a business. I run a business by myself. Not only do I run a business, I am a speaker. <laughs> I'm a blogger. I am a brand influencer. I have a business that is starting to take me on the road a little bit more where his job is already very demanding and demands a lot of his time. So it would be very easy for him to say to me, nope, you're not doing that. Nope, you can't do that. Nope, I'm not on board for that. You need to stick back here and take care of our three kids and mind this house and do that. He could say that, but he doesn't. And the thing is, is I kind of knew that about him before I walked down the aisle because I had already peeped it. Like I was assessing him all along just to see like, you know, what kind of dad is he going to be? What's his temperament? You know, how does he feel about a woman who is ambitious, who goes to school, who has goals? I used to kind of probe and watch and listen and see absolutely they have to be sure of their spouse it won't work it won't work the wrong person absolutely the wrong person will sabotage every single dream that you have it's it's basically like the partner you have in business which i don't know much about because i don't have a partner in business at least not yet um you know just like having the wrong partner in business is probably not gonna bode well for you. Like having the wrong partner in life just can't do anything else for you. It's just not a good mix. You have to have somebody that's supportive. And obviously there's levels to the support, but they've got to absolutely same vibration. They've got to believe in you. They've got to believe in what you're trying to accomplish. 
they have to be your biggest cheerleader when you have terrible days. Like he is awesome when I kind of feel like, you know, am I, when I was in a place of, am I doing the right thing? Am I on the right track? He's just always like, nope, you can do it. Just keep at it. Good job. That's what you need. Like days when you don't believe in yourself, you need somebody to kind of give you that boost. And like I said, I'm growing by leaps and bounds as a person and in business. And like, he's just ready to ride that with me. Like he's not feeling any way about, you know, wow, my woman's looking like a bigger deal than I am or whatever. Like he's not at all insecure he's just like happy for me and he's just he's ready for it to pop big time you know because he's been watching me build this thing for forever so you know you need that if you want to do anything worthwhile in life and again it I can talk about me in terms of like a business Absolutely. You need a solid foundation. I can talk about me and business, but it's not just about business owners. It's really before I was a business owner, I was just in a company in an HR department trying to rise the ranks before I saw that that wasn't possible. So even then, when I was trying to rise those ranks and kind of do that, he was very, very supportive of me rising and doing that. And so it kind of let me know that I had somebody in my corner that I can rock with, like, for life. Like, you know, there's just nothing better than that. So, again, you know, if you're not in a relationship right this moment and you're feeling like this pressure for whatever reason, because, like, I'm in my 30s and so a lot of my friends and girlfriends are at that stage, like, if they are not already kind of gotten with somebody there's almost like a little bit of a frenzy within them that it's like my biological clock's ticking I need a baby like yesterday people are on them about why they're bandless and just kind of crazy stuff that we still deal with in society today when you're a woman of a certain age and you haven't yet been pinned down and walked down the aisle and had rice thrown at you like crazy stuff but that said um you know, all ambitious in their own right, all rock stars. And I just, as a friend, see where it's going to take a certain kind of gentleman, a certain kind of guy to be with any of these women because they rock it like in their own disciplines. They either own their own businesses or they're senior leaders in the companies that they're in. And they can't have any guy that's insensitive or not supportive or not comfortable in his own skin step into them it's just not going to work he's gonna have to come with his stuff and be comfortable and be ready to support and all of that kind of thing so um i just think like extremely dynamic right extremely dynamic um and it's almost like society makes you feel like that's a fault to be that dynamic absolutely have to be flexible i mean look This is true story. In my house, I cook. I cook. (laughs) I clean too. But thank God for my husband because there are times when I just need to sit down and get a blog post done or I've got a proposal that needs to go out and he will quite happily throw a load into the wash. He will wrangle with the kids. He will put them to bed. He will let me lock myself in my office and do what I need to get done. And it's like when you're trying to build something or build yourself, you need to have that pressure taken off of you. Like I have three kids. My kids are seven, three, and I have an 18 month old. So my life is busy, busy. Like there's homework to be done. You know, my little guy's like running crazy. He's out of control and adorable, but out of control and and then I've got the toddler and this one fighting and that and I run a business all through this so like if that kind of pressure was always on me to be on and not having like time to just kind of deal with my stuff it would be impossible I would have folded already long time long time I would have folded so um the takeaways really is 
communicate don't rush the process i mean as much as you can feel the pressure especially if you're my age or older mid-30s and up um you can feel pressure to have to be in something but if you're out here already grinding for yourself already doing for yourself and you know where you're going and have that sense of yourself you have to really be choosy and i don't mean choosy to a fault where it's like the person you're trying to go after doesn't even exist. I just mean that there has to be some common ground, some foundation, something, some barometer where you and this person meet and it's understood. Absolutely. Um, have standards. You and your partner meet in the middle and there's an understanding of what you're trying to do independent of the relationship and you equally understand what he's trying to do independent of the relationship. And also, you know, once you communicate initially, it's a constant thing. It doesn't stop. You have to always be communicating. I'm always talking to my husband, always trying to understand, like, is everything okay? Whatever, you know, how, what's working, what's not. Like, we're always kind of reevaluating. So be open to that. Um, and, you know, understand that, like, what you want, your ambitions, your goals, and all that actually trumps the feeling of being in a relationship. So, yeah, being in a relationship is great, but if you feel stifled, it, it really doesn't matter. It doesn't matter one iota <laughs> who you're with and how amorous you feel because at some point you're going to start to regret that person or regret your situation because of the things that you were unable to do um, as a result of being with them. It just happens. Um, so it's best that you focus on getting with the right person, having the right people in your corner so that you can do exactly what you want to do and you have no regrets down the line. That's kind of the point. And I mean, this is also like I'm speaking about like romantic relationships, but it's even an extension to talk about like the people in your life. So like friends and family members, like 2016's coming and there's some people that have been trying to like poison my aura. They going because you know why? I don't have the space, the energy to invite them into what I'm trying to build. I just don't have it anymore for them. So like even on that front, like, you have to kind of be mindful of who you're keeping company with, whether that's a friend, family, or otherwise. And you have to be willing to kind of let that go if it doesn't make sense for what it is you're trying to build. Thankfully, my, my little nucleus of family, extremely supportive. It takes a village to run what I run. Um, but for the folios that thought they can come and taint my business... 2016 is the year where some people are about to get the axe gone. Bye. Bye, Felicia. Bye, Philip. All of that. Um, because those things can also affect how you do business and how you progress in life. So, you know, yes, declutter. Declutter and purge, as I like to say. Purge. Flush the toilet. Bye. You have to do it. Um, and less is more. And for me, I have built a very, um, a very toxic, less um, kind of ecosystem with my husband in that when the second that people try to bring drama my way, I'm just like this. Get far, far, far away from me. Far. Um, because that's just not the life that we live. We just don't. So my advice is, again... Pick the right person. Take your time to do that. See that? Um, take your time to do that. Please do not feel pressure to jump in a relationship just because. <laughs> yes, introverts unite. Yes. Um, communicate, communicate, communicate. And don't be afraid to let go of people, relationships, and things that don't serve you or what you're trying to build. And again, I want to not make this just specific to 
building a business because that's what I do. But this is true if you are working for someone else and you just have aspirations of rising the ladder, you really have to be very mindful of this as well. So I hope this was helpful. I hope you take my advice because 2016 is coming. I think we got what, three weeks left until this year ends. So this is a good time to be having this conversation and reevaluating things um, because next week is going to be my last Ask Arena for the year because a sister needs a break <laughs> and I just want to sip some some wine and just do me. Um, so next week I want to discuss 2016 goals, you know, 2015 in review and just like, you know, trends and what to look forward to for 2016 or what I'm looking forward to for 2016, I will share. And hopefully you'll share back with me and let me know what you're thinking for yourself, your career, your business and, and so forth. So that's what I want to do next week. It'll kind of be like my holiday scope. And then I'm going to take about a two week break to just be with family and kind of declutter my head and get prepared for 2016 and do that. Oh, cousins on, holla, and I'm about to end. <laughs> so just to let you know where you can find me, you can find me at talentthinkinnovations.com. That is my business website. So again, that's talentthinkinnovations.com. You can also find me on my blog, which is called the Aristocracy of HR. You made it, girl, holla. Um... You can find me on my blog, thearistocracyofhr.com, where I talk about world of work, tech, big data, uh, what else? Working motherhood, woman in entrepreneurship, the gamut, you can find there. So that's my baby as well. Um, please, please, I do put these replays on my YouTube channel. It is youtube.com forward slash the aristocracy of HR to keep up with the content that's going on there. Please subscribe. I would love it if you subscribe. I really do try to put out some thoughtful pieces in addition to the replays here, but just thoughtful pieces in terms of other world of work topics there and um, usually do it on a weekly basis. Right now, I'm kind of on a hiatus, although I will be putting out one more video before the end of the year. So stay tuned for that. You can follow me on Twitter at Zarina of HR. I'm on Instagram at Zarina of HR. Always happy to connect on LinkedIn. So please find me there. And again, thank you so much. Like, thank you for tuning in every week. <laughs> if you're one of the regulars, thank you, Letaria. You're awesome. Thank you, Lauren. I love you. Thank you for joining. Um, thank you so much for the hearts. I appreciate it. And the other place where you can catch replays is at catch.me forward slash Sarina of HR. Um, that will be up immediately if in case you just don't catch this within the uh, 24 hours. So I appreciate you. Have a great end of the week. Have a rocking weekend. I'm about to go and check out Cereal. I don't know how many of y'all are into cereal, but I am, and it's back, and it's juicy. It's about that Bergdahl guy, and I can't wait to dig in. Girl, I am so glad you about to be on Periscope. Woo -woo. Um, so yeah, Cinnamon Toast Crunch. <laughs> so yeah, I am going to dig into cereal and wind it down for the night, but Thank you so much for being here and I will check in with you guys next week. Thanks so much. Bye. Good night, love.